we already talked about how the vaccine membrane potential is established. We uh, did that in our last video. So, how is an action potential elicited? So, um, let's say, say we have a stimulation because that's what we need in order for an action potential to occur. We need stimulation. And if this stimulation is touch, we're going to have mechanical receptors. These mechanical receptors are going to be distorted. Now, when these are distorted or they are stretched, they are going to allow an influx of sodium. Now, when they allow this influx of sodium, so these are mechanical gated channels for sodium. And what we have is touch as a stimulus. So, okay, so if our resting membrane potential is here, let's say it's negative 70 millivolts, okay, what we're going to have is we're going to have the inside of the cell becoming less negative or more positive. So we're going to have it approaching uh, the threshold. Now, if the stimulus is not enough to reach threshold, we are going to have local potentials, and these local potentials are not propagating. They don't. Uh, they they're not propagating, and they can. They can fall out, return to. Um, they return to the resting membrane potential because we have uh, the leaky channels that are still open, allowing uh, potassium to go out. So we found that it cancels that, and it can come back to the resting membrane potential. The affirmative as well in that it more of the stimulation is given, we can sum up and get to threshold. Now at threshold, we have the second type of channels that open. Now these are the sodium voltage gated channels. Now we find that at rest, these sodium voltage gated channels, they have two types of gates. And at rest, we call the top gate as the activation gate with and is closed and the inactivation gate down here is open. Once we reach threshold we find that the activation gate opens up and the inactivation gate starts closing. Now when they start closing they create this opening and that creates an influx of sodium and that influx causes the action potential, causes depolarization. Now, at heading to the equilibrium potential of sodium, we find that the activation, the inactivation gets, okay, before that can happen, it finishes with the closing, and therefore no more sodium can come in. And when that happens, well, well at the same time that happens, we have some potassium voltage gated channels that open and allow an efflux of potassium and that is what causes the repolarization. Now if this is repolarizing, we we'll find that it tries to go to the equilibrium potential for potassium which is below, which is lower than or more negative than the resting membrane potential. So we call this hyperpolarization, repolarization, depolarization there. So once it goes in the hyperpolarization mode, we have our sodium potassium ATP pump returning it to uh, resting membrane potential. So, once we have that happening, um, the sodium that came in because of the voltage gated channels opening for sodium, they trickle on. So, if this is the point where they came in, they trickle on to the next component. Okay, and they cause a depolarization here, and those will also uh, go ahead, and that is how it is propagated. So you have a wave of depolarization, followed by a wave of repolarization, 